if a function is undefined at a point, but we have a limit at that point, we can make it continuous. So if you look at this function h, it's the ratio of two polynomials. All polynomials are continuous. So this is going to be continuous as long as the denominator is not zero. So our function just has a little trouble here at two. Everywhere else it, um, it's continuous. So let's see, what is, what we can do, since the function is just not defined at two, is we can think about the limit as t tends to two of our function. Let's see, to find that limit, we can factor. If we use um, t plus 5 and t minus 2 all over t minus 2, oh, our function is much simpler. We just have the limit as t tends to 2 of t plus 5, which is 7. So we can fix this function if we simply say, okay, it can, well, we'll make a new function, I guess. Let's call it g. All right, we have the old function, which is t squared plus 3t minus 10 over t minus 2. That's continuous, so we'll, we'll let it be that as continuous as long as t is not 2. So we'll let the function have that value if t is not 2. And then if t is 2, we found that the limit was 7, so we'll define the value of g at, uh, at 2 to be 7. That way, the limit as t tends to 2 of g of t is 7, and that matches the value of the function at 7. So now it's continuous at 2. And what we've done is taken a function that um, was continuous everywhere but a particular point. It just wasn't defined at that point. So we made a new function that's defined in more places, defined now at 2 as well as everywhere else, that is continuous. We extended this to be a continuous function. Let's look at another example. Okay, we want this to be a continuous function at 4. We can see 4 is a problem because uh, downstairs we'd have 16 minus 12 minus 4 is 0. So everywhere else, um, well, everywhere that the denominator is not 0, this would be a continuous function. It's also got a 0 denominator at negative 1. So we have 1, negative 3 minus negative 1 would be, would be plus um, 3. So we have 1 plus 3 minus 4 is 0. So we got two dis discontinuities, one at x equals 4 and one at x equals um, negative 1. Let's see if we can make it be continuous at 4. Well, our function really simplifies a little bit here. We have x squared minus 16 over x squared minus 3x minus 4, but that factors to x minus 4 over x plus 4. And the denominator factors to x minus 4 times x plus 1. So really our function isn't that bad. If we wanted to find the limit as x tends to 4 of g of x, that would just be the limit as x tends to 4 of this, which if x isn't 4, then those, are, that's, those, are, um, those can cancel. And so we have x plus 4 over x plus 1. So we get 8 over 5. OK. So we just need to extend this function so the value at um, we want to set it up so that since so that g of 4 will be 8 fifths there. But we can't remove the discontinuity at negative 1 because the limit as x tends to negative 1 of g of x would be the limit as x tends to negative 1 of x plus 4 over x uh, plus 1, which doesn't exist. Because it's, uh, we're getting, the top's getting close to 3, and the bottom is going to, to 0. You're getting tinier and tinier positive or negative numbers, so on one side it goes to positive infinity, the other goes to negative infinity, so this doesn't exist. So can g be extended to be continuous at negative 1? No. Can it be extended to be continuous at 4? Yeah. So you just make a function that um, is a little bit more, more broadly defined, right? So it would be, be this value as long as x isn't 4. And if x is 4, um, then the value of the function should be 8 fifths, so that the limit of the function as you approach 4 matches the value of the function 
at 4. Of course, that would be the same as just making x be this guy. x plus, or making h be x plus 4 over x plus 1. So now as x tends to 4, you get 8 fifths. So this would be the same in this case. You still can't remove that discontinuity at negative 1. OK, one more. This function, cosine's continuous, a constant's continuous, so the numerator's difference of continuous function, that has to be continuous. x squared, we know, is a polynomial, so it's continuous. So the quotient is continuous right now everywhere except 0. So currently continuous except at 0. Um, because f at 0 is undefined. If the limit exists, though, at 0, then we could just define f at 0 to be the value of that limit, and so it would then be continuous. So let's see if we can find the limit as x tends to 0 of our function. Well, this has uh, this limit has the the indeterminate form 0 over 0 because as x tends to 0 cosine gets closer and closer to 1 1 uh, closer and closer to 1 minus 1 we get closer and closer to 0 as x tends to 0 x squared will also get closer and closer to 0 since it has that form we can apply L'Hopital's rule and trade this in for the limit as x tends to 0 of the derivative of the numerator which is minus sine x over the derivative of the denominator, which is 2x. Again, that has the form 0 over 0, so we could apply L'Hopital's again and trade that in for the limit as x tends to 0 of negative cosine x over 2, which is negative 1 half. So it does have a limit at 0, so we just want to set it up so our function is defined to be negative 1 half at 0. So we'll make a new function based on the old one when x isn't 0, then we'll let it be what it used to be. But when x is 0, we'll make the function be negative 1 half. This is continuous everywhere except 0, so we're fine there. The only issue is continuity at 0. But if we look at the limit as x tends to 0 of g of x, we just show that that limit, that would be the limit at, since x is not 0, then g of x it's just getting closer and closer to 0. g of x would be this, right? And we saw that that limit's negative 1 half. And we define negative 1 half to be the value of g at 0. So as x approaches 0, the values that come out of g of x get closer and closer to the actual value of g at 0. So it's continuous at 0, too. So this is now continuous everywhere.